How you doing? This is Tom and this is Tom's Radio Room Show and we're outside and I've got this MFJ vertical antenna temporarily keep that in mind temporarily installed it's 31 feet long so it goes way up in the air man that's the highest I've had any antenna and um, of course since this is my first time setting this up I struggled a little bit the um, I originally was going to put it over there that's where I wanted it that way it would be near that wall that goes into my workshop but right above there is a tree and I'd have to cut those limbs down which I could not reach them so forget that so I moved it over to spot number two and we've got it bolted or tied to that fence post which is in about three feet of concrete so it's pretty sturdy there's the transformer box down there which was a little confusing um, because okay helicopter go overhead stand by please It's a little bit windy that's windy that's why it's so noisy plus that's a trainer helicopter that people learn how to fly a helicopter so it's going real slow uh, trying to land at the airport nearby so sorry for the interruption so as I was saying I was a little confused by that box because both the picture in the manual and the pictures that I saw on the internet were different so this is apparently a new transformer box, but I got it hooked up. Now, I do have a little bit of extra wire for the antenna. And I didn't initially want to cut that off because that's cut for a certain length, but I will have to uh, eventually cut it off because it is too long. I don't know why it's so long, but it's too long. Uh, I played with it a little bit and it didn't seem to matter that it's laying there in that bush. I, um, I ran my coax over here to this temporary pole, which allows me to get it up overhead so people don't trip on it or get their neck caught it and then bring it into my workshop. Um, I've grounded it. I did not use the ground radials they provided. Uh, the instruction said these are ground radios for, not really ground radios because you don't ground them, but they're for 40 meters, which is what the antenna wire is cut for. And I plan to use this antenna on other frequencies. So I just grounded it to the pole right there with a short piece of copper wire. So that's how it's grounded. Now, to go inside my workshop, and I had the analyzer running. Hopefully it's still running. Yes, it's still running. And I uh, can see if I can get a good picture here. That's what the waveform, it's doing real-time updates. So that's what the waveform looks like. And it's got two very low SWR readings. Uh, is one is around 7 me uh, megahertz which is what this thing is designed for and the other one is around 20 megahertz and so if I want to operate on any other frequencies as far as transmitting for sure I'll need to use this antenna tuner so it's coming together again the, t the setup you saw outside is very temporary and as I mentioned before in my previous video, this antenna is a temporary antenna that you can take down, take it out to a park or something, put it up real quick, use it, take it down, bring it home. You don't want to leave it set up. It's um, a fiberglass pole. It's 
it gets very narrow at the top. It's like, I don't know, five or six sections, and the top section is very narrow. It's, it's smaller than a pencil, much smaller than a pencil. Um, kind of the size of a ballpoint pen insert. The insert in a ballpoint pen, about that size. Pretty darn small, and it would probably snap off pretty easily. Now, I don't know whether I should wrap the antenna around the pole or not. Since it's fiberglass, I wouldn't think it would make any difference. And maybe that's why I have uh, excess of wire for the antenna. Maybe that's the idea. It didn't say in, in the instructions to do that, but maybe that's the idea is to wrap it around the pole and therefore you will need a longer wire than coming straight down, which is what I've done initially. I've just got it going straight down the side of the pole. Now, the other thing the instructions uh, tell you you can do is you can clip off that last section a little bit, a couple of inches, clip it off, and then you can put the wire down inside the pole, the telescopic pole and uh, therefore it's not flapping in the breeze like mine is right now. So I'll have to experiment with that. I've moved that, you saw that excess wire, I moved it around and I checked this SWR and it didn't change. So laying it on that bush doesn't seem to be a problem. But I definitely will um, either use up the extra wire by wrapping it around the pole or cut it off. So anyway, that's where I'm at so far. It does seem to um, have a low SWR. Let's see if I can move this over here. Right there at the SWR, whoops, I missed it, is 1.09 and it's at 7.6 megahertz. A little high for the amateur radio band, but of course, there's a lot of factors that go, go into that. The cable, um, how I've got everything strung, that could affect that SWR reading per frequency. So the frequency could be slightly off. Slightly off. Plus, I'm not using the uh, included counterpose. That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, wires that come it comes with four wires that are soldered together, and that's what you're supposed to put on it for a ground and just lay that in the ground. The other problem I had, and I didn't use that is I didn't have a place to lay out the, um, those radials because I'm up against the uh, galvanized fence. So anyway, that's the show for today. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.